Hi, it's Glassboxed here and today we are going to talk about data table. We're going to see what a data table is and how you can apply data table to your Cucumber feature file. So first of all, what is a data table? Now to understand data table, we need to quickly look at passing parameters. We've already covered passing parameters. It's a very simple concept. We pass in a parameter using double quotation marks and then we capture that in a step definition using regex capture groups. And it's that simple. We then pass the argument that we send to the step definition file as a parameter in the method signature and then we actually use it and do something with it. Great. Now, when we think about parameters, in this case, this parameter here, yes, it is very powerful. However, there are limitations. And what is the limitation? The limitation is this. We can only pass in one thing at a time. What if you wanted to, say, pass in a lot of data in one go? Now, in the previous tutorial, we looked at scenario outline, which was basically something that allowed us to use different parameters for a given scenario run, i.e. the same scenario would run multiple times but pass in different parameters based on an examples table. But what if you don't want to do that? What if you actually want to pass in a chunk of information? What if we want to do something very similar to, to this? And for the sake of argument, let's just say something like this. Now these pages don't actually exist on the testroom.com but let's just say they did for, for the sake of argument let's just say you want to do something like this you want to pass in a lot of different data in one scenario now if you look at it this actually looks uh, very well it doesn't look very presentable it it looks like we're repeating a lot of things it looks like we're using very similar data with only a small minor change and so on we can use something called data tables to actually pass in a chunk of information as part of a single step which allows us to pass in more than the current single parameter that we pass in, i.e. we can use data tables to bypass this limitation we have with passing in single parameters as part of a step. So how can we do this? Well, let's have a look. To pass in a data table, let's keep this step as it is and let's modify the then step instead. So if we look at the then step, the step definition for it is very simple. All we're doing is we're just printing out the page title. Nothing, nothing too fancy. But let's just say we want to do something different. So instead of saying then the page title should be visible, let's just say something like the page should contain the following links and we can now pass in a number of say expected links using something called a data table so what does a data table actually look like to use a data table we need to use the pipe character and the pipe character i assume you'll know looks like this and then you can pass in a whole host of data so let's just say in this case, if we go to the test room, let's just take just a couple as examples. So we'll take git tutorial as the first one. So let's just say git tutorial. And now let's pass in another one. So we can say something like Java web driver tutorial. And let's take a, a final third one as well. Java Cucumber tutorial. And let's just right click on this and select the pretty format. And notice that it's actually formatted this, this data with a slight indent just under the then step. So when we write a step definition with this particular format, 
this is us basically saying that I want to pass in all of this information as part of this particular step. In this case, when this step runs, now we don't have a step definition for this test step just yet. We'll get to that. But when this step runs, pass in all of these value into the step definition. So if we save the cucumber file, we can see that this is now highlighted in orange because the step definition for that does not exist. Now to make things a bit quicker, we will comment out these lines. We'll save it once more and we'll just run the feature file. Great. So it looks like Cucumber has basically said that it's only recognized this step as a step to run because we've obviously commented out the previous two and it's given us a makeup of what it expects the step definition to look like. So we can quite happily just copy paste this into our step definition class. So we will copy it here. And if you notice, there are a few differences say between this when step here, i.e. this step where we pass in the parameter and this then step here, which obviously doesn't actually take a parameter. If you look at these two steps, if you just look at the actual text of the step, this one takes a parameter, this one doesn't. But the step definition is recognizing the fact that we are passing in a chunk of data. And this chunk of data is represented as a data table. So if we go back to our feature file and just save it, you can now see that the orange background has now disappeared because the test step is recognized to have a matching step definition. So let's look at this step definition. The key difference between the when step where we pass in a parameter and this then step where we don't pass in a parameter but instead we pass in an array of information is that the when step recognizes the parameter that we send in and captures it in a regex pattern but the then step does not. Instead it expects a data table to be passed in as part of the method signature. So how does this actually work? Now because Cucumber was really awesome and it helped generate this test step, it actually gives us a lot of information already. One thing we can do is this data table can be converted into a list, a list which contains list or a list which contains a map or a map and so on. So instead of using a data table, we can actually convert this to a list and we will convert it to a list of strings. Okay, so let's just get rid of all of that and let's get rid of the pending exception as well. And in here, we just want to use the information that we get from this feature file. And for the moment, all we'll do is we'll just do some basic system as just to make sure that the information we are getting from this then step is being propagated correctly to the then definition method. So we will do something very simple. We'll just use a basic for loop to loop through the list. So let's actually give this a meaningful name. So we will name it something like links. So now let's say links dot size and I plus plus. And in the loop itself, we will do something very simple like system.out.println. And we will say links.get and just say the value of i. And that's it. Nothing more complicated than that. So now if we run our cucumber test, we can actually comment these two lines as well because they're strictly not needed. They're not needed because all we are doing 
to understand how data tables work is simply passing in this data as part of this step. So if we just run this, then we can see that when this step was executed, it printed out Git tutorial, which is the first thing that we passed in, then Java web tutorial, and then closely followed by Java Cucumber tutorial. So this is a method that we can employ to pass in an array of data in a single test step in a Cucumber feature file. There are a number of places where you may want to do this. For instance, if we're running, say, a test using WebDriver, you may want to actually check to see that certain types of text are visible on the page. Now, I could have very easily written this into this test step instead, or written multiple then steps. But if I do that, then it may kind of overgrowth the whole scenario, i.e. the scenario will end up looking more than it really should be. And by doing it this way, we can very easily add in more links as we like. So employing this means that we have almost a very dynamic array, i.e. we can add in as much information as we like without having to think about rewriting steps or adding in more steps or taking away more steps or anything like that. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Until next time, ciao. Hey guys, thanks ever so much for watching my video as I really appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button below to stay up to date with my latest videos and kindly like and share my videos as this is one of the best ways for me to grow my ever evolving channel. If you have any ideas or suggestions for this video series then let me know in the comment section below. Until next time, ciao.